So now that we've learned all the pieces and parts of the central limit theorem for proportions, we want to apply it to a problem and see how it goes. In 2018, a Gallup poll asked 1,009 random adult Americans whether public smoking should be banned in the U.S., and 585 replied yes. There are 210 million U.S. adults. All right, what is the population, and what is the sample, and what are their respective sizes? <laughs> That's what I'm getting at right here. Okay, so the population would be all U.S. adults, or adult Americans. That's another way you could say it. And then the sample was a random group of U.S. adults. Oops, I have enough space in there to write it. All right, I don't know why I left the little ends being so big. I'm going to fix that for future. So this is 210 million, right, because that's the population size. And then the sample size was 1,009. Now let's find the following. X, P hat, and Q hat. All right, well, X is the number that are our successes, right? The number that we were looking for. The number that say yes, for example, to this. So X is the 585. And I'll just put that said yes. It's the number of successes that we learned about in chapter six, if you remember. So all this ties back to the binomial distribution. P hat, well, P hat is X over N. We learned that at the beginning of this section. So P hat would be 585 divided by 1009. And it says to give two decimal places. So let's go and grab decimals for this. All right, so remember that P hat is 585 over 1009, and we can get that it's 0.58 because it's said to round to two decimal places. So we'll say 0.58. Now Q hat, we learned back in chapter 6 that it's 1 minus P hat. So that would be 1 minus 0.58, which we can grab decimals again real quick. 1 minus 0.58 is 0.42. There we go. All right, now what type of observational study is conducted here? Okay, well remember, just to review, right, this is a review of section 1.2 is when we learned these. This one is a snapshot in time, right, snapshot of the current moment, if you will. This one is looking at past records. And this one is when we track and watch over an extended period. Right. So rather obviously it's this one. <laughs> but I just wanted to remind everybody what those three were of time. And when you call up people and ask them their feelings on something, right, which is what Gallup poll is doing here, that's cross-sectional. That's always cross-sectional. All right, so now we want to verify the conditions that the central limit theorem for proportions are met. Okay, so we have three conditions, and I'm going to answer this just like I want you to do when you do this for your work. So random, independent, normal. It's not enough to write the three conditions and show you understand what they are. You have to verify them. All right, the first thing I want to verify is random. Well, random is easy because random was given up here. By me writing it here, right, that means that it's given down here. Done. Easy peasy. No problem. Independent is the hardest one to manage. Independent is the one where we need, I'm going to give myself some space over here, n to be less than or equal to 0.05 capital N. 
This is always the trickiest bit to get your mind around. So little n we set up here is 1009. And 0.05, right, so less than 5% of capital N, which we said right here is 210 million. Now, these are both numbers, so you could actually find this number <laughs> if you want to, um, but you don't need to because, of course it is. Of course 1,009 is less than 5% of 210 million. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so, so this is a yes, of course. Now, if you want to, you can actually go to uh, Desmos and find that value if you're, if you're interested. It's, it's not particularly hard to do. So you can just say uh, 0 0.05 times 210 million is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros after that. So it's 10,500,000. So if you want to write that number, you're welcome to, but it's not necessary. You can actually stop right there and just say yes, of course. But if you like, this is 10,500,000. And 1,009 is less than 5% of, or excuse me, less than 5% of 210 million, which is less than 5% of, I guess I don't need those parentheses there, that value. It's not necessary, right? You don't have to do that part. All right, at least for me. <laughs> I don't know if with your instructor. All right, and then normal. Normal is a little tricky. It used to be just bigger than 30, but that's not the case for proportions. 30 is not a big enough for a sample, or for a big enough sample for a poll or a survey. So we need that n times p times q has to be greater than 10. All right, so we need to find what n times p times q is. Okay, well, n was our sample size. So n was 1,009 times p. Well, we don't know p, so we'll have to use p hat and q hat, which is fine. You know, that happens. So we'll use p hat, which is 0 0.58. 0 0.58. I'll do parentheses instead of the dots, just because it, it gets to be too many dots. But And then 0 0.58. For two, we already found p hat and q hat right here, so we're just going to use those three values, and then we'll grab Desmos and multiply them and cross our fingers that it's bigger than 10. So 1,009 times 0.58 times 0.42, or if you like, you can do parentheses times 0.58, because in math, parentheses is the same thing in this application as multiplication. And you can see it's 245.79, so it's 246. And 246, or 245.79, is greater than 10. So this is a yes. We've proven all three of them. Random, of course, is the easiest, but the other two are also proven. It's just important to keep in mind that in this section, 30 is not going to cut it. It has to be that NPQ or NP hat Q hat is greater than 10. All right, now we're going to describe the sampling distribution. All right, so the sampling distribution gets described with shape, center, and spread. Okay, so the shape. Well, the shape is normal. We just proved it right here. Normal. Done. The center. The center is the mean of the p hats. So that's its symbol. It's the mean of all those sample proportions, which is p, right? That's what it says in the central limit theorem, right? That it's p right here, right? It's p. So what was p? Well, our best guess is 0.58, right? So we will do that, 0.58. That's our best guess for what it is. And then our spread is the standard error of the p hats, which is sigma p hat. Again, these notations are interchangeable. This is kind of a more modern computer notation with the SE, right? That's standard error. Right, that's what that stands for, right? Standard error, right? That's what this stands for, standard error. They, they mean the same thing. And it's a big, ugly formula. It's the big square root p times q over n. Or in our case, since we don't have P and Q, we'll have to do our best with P hats and Q hats, right? Okay, so 
That's the square root of 0.58 times 0.42 over n. And if you like parentheses for that multiplication instead of the times dot, that's fine. And n was 1009. All right, so I'm going to go grab Desmos because this is obviously something we are going to use Desmos for. <laughs> All right, so use Desmos, grab the square root first. So take the square root, then take 0.58. And if you want, you can press division first. So that'll be 0.58 times 0.42 divided by 1009. Now, if you don't think to do that, if you say, hey, 0.58 times 0.42 divided by 1009, it's actually perfectly fine. It's the same answer. So it's okay if only if it looks like only the back part is divided because multiplication and division are all on an equal footing. So these two problems are the same. So 0 0.01554, right? I don't know how many decimal places we wanted. I will caution you though, make sure when you're putting it in Desmos, it's okay if you have it um, all in one fraction or like this, but make sure that it's all underneath that square root, right? Just be cautious of that. Oh, and of course, if you wanted to do, uh, I, think I showed this earlier, but I'll just say it again. If you want to use parentheses instead of um, the times dot, that will work also.